If you're looking for a new light for your 5x5 tent, there's a pretty good chance you've come across quantum boards from Horticulture Lighting Group in your research. In this video, I'm going to show you my test results from a couple of their options for the 5x5 space. The HLG 600R spec, which uses the tested and true 288 diode boards, and the 650R Diablo, which uses the new QB648 boards. I took over 3,500 measurements between these two lights using a new testing tool I built, and I'm going to try to determine if it's worth shelling out the extra cash for the 650R Diablo or not. Before I get into this, I want to thank HLG for sending me both of these lamps free of charge for testing. The 650R and 600R spec we're looking at today both use the same heatsink and the same driver. The only difference is the quantum boards built into each light. The 600R spec is equipped with four of their QB288 R spec boards, which each consist of 272 Samsung LM301H diodes in 3500K color temperature, and 16 Samsung LH351H V2 deep red 660 nanometer diodes, for a total of 1088 white chips and 64 deep red chips on the lamp. The 650R uses four of HLG's QB648 Diablo boards, which are each packed with over double the diode count of the RSpec 288s. Each of the four QB648 boards are made up of 648 LM301H diodes in a mix of 3000K and 5000K, and these are complemented by 18 of the same LH351HV2 deep red diodes as the RSpec. This adds up to a total of 2,592 white diodes and 72 deep reds on the 650R. As you might have guessed, despite the fact that both of these lights use the very same driver, the 650R draws about 650 watts of power, and the 600R spec pulls about 600 watts. Both of these lights run hot, and I measured over 60 degrees Celsius on the back of the heatsink in a few different places. For my American friends, that's about 140 degrees Fahrenheit, which is hot enough that you can only keep your hand on there for a couple seconds or so. Based on the sphere reports that HLG has made public for each of these lights, the photosynthetic photon flux measured for the 600R spec comes in at 1552 micromoles per second, while the 650R outputs 1770 micromoles per second. Essentially, this is just a measurement of the amount of photosynthetically active light that's emitted by the lamp per second, in this case in the range of 380 nanometers to 780 nanometers. Efficacy of the lamps, which tells you how many micromoles of light you can expect per joule of energy, was measured at 2.55 micromoles per joule for the 600R and 2.81 micromoles per joule for the 650R. I've also added the spectral power distributions from the test reports for each light here below. So, from the specs and test results alone, it's quite obvious that the 650R Diablo is the superior light. It's got more than twice as many diodes than the 600R spec, which means the diodes on the 650R are going to be fed half the amount of power, since that power is spread out over so many more chips. This makes it considerably more efficient, and given that the driver is putting out about 50 watts more than the 600R spec, it's no surprise that the 650R output is going to be higher, but this comes at a price. Right now, until the end of October, the 600R spec is on sale for 722 bucks USD. The 650R currently costs $1,099, making it 52% more expensive than the 600R spec. So is the performance bump you get from the 650R worth the extra cash? And does the 600R spec perform well enough in a 5x5 to justify its spot in the lineup? And what exactly is the performance gap between these two lights? Well, let's check it out. I'm very excited to share my latest and greatest project with everybody now. So I've been testing PPFD of grow lights for a few years and I've always wanted to up my game in terms of consistency and efficiency. So I finally got organized and spent a couple months designing and building a solution for my problem and here it is. I've created a 5 foot by 5 foot measurement enclosure that uses a gantry system to move my Apogee SQ500 quantum sensor around for me. And man, what an improvement it is over my old methods. I've written a program that runs a sensor through the 5x5 at 3 inch intervals, stopping to take a measurement at each of the 441 points. At each measurement point, the sensor is read by a little interface made by a company called Blue Acro, and this information is passed to an Arduino, which then blasts it out over MQTT. I have a Python script that runs on my desktop that receives the measurements from MQTT and loads them into an Excel spreadsheet for me. I 3D printed all the custom parts for this system, and drew the majority of them up in SketchUp myself, with the exception of a couple that I found online and modified for my setup. 
The enclosure is temperature controlled with an exhaust fan that keeps the temperature at 25 degrees Celsius. Initially the exhaust system gave me some trouble because the negative pressure that it was generating was sucking in my door flap and messing with all my measurements so I ended up having to put some boards across my door flap just to keep the mylar in place. I'm currently in the process of building inserts for the enclosure that will allow me to measure a 4x4, 3x3, 2x4, and 2x2 space as well. Alright enough preamble, let's get to the results. I tested these two lights at heights of 30 inches, 32 inches, 34 inches, and 36 inches from the surface of the light to the surface of my quantum sensor, and I ran each light for an hour prior to testing them. Let's start with the results for the 30 inch distance. On the left is the 600R spec, and on the right is the 650R Diablo. You'll notice the measurements run from 2 inches to 58 inches in either direction, and that's just because I can't get the sensor right flush against the walls, so rather than 0 to 60, it's more like 2 to 58. For all measurements, both lights were hung in this orientation with the long side running top to bottom. As I said before, I'm taking 441 measurements per light per height, which is a lot to look at in a video, so what I've done is broken these measurements down into groups like I've shown with these black borders here, so I can get it down to an 11x11 11 11 grid for this video rather than 21x21. 21 21. So the majority of the values that I'm showing in these smaller charts are averages of four separate measurements. You'll see I've done a few calculations on the right. The first is calculating coverage uniformity, or how evenly the light is spread across the space. So this just takes the minimum reading for each height and divides it by the maximum reading for that height, and you get a number between 0 and 1. So if every reading was the exact same across the whole space at this particular height, the uniformity score would be a perfect 1.0. Since these lights have identical footprints, their uniformity scores are pretty much the same. Below that I've got a bunch of averages. First is the average for all measurements across the space, and then it goes down into averages around certain perimeters. And by perimeters I just mean a ring of measurements, and not everything within that ring. So for example, the 5x5 perimeter average looks at just the average of these measurements here, and the 4x4 perimeter average would look at these ones. So at 30 inches, the 600R spec peaks at just a little over 900 micromoles per meter squared per second right at the dead center, with the corners in the mid 400s. The 650R Diablo gets up over a thousand micromoles within the center square foot and has corners in the mid 500s. If you wanted to get the 600R up to the 1000 micromole mark, you could drop it down a little further, but you're going to be sacrificing even more in the corners and your uniformity will suffer. A thousand micromoles is a ton of light though, and it's pretty widely regarded as the maximum that you'd want to run if you're not supplementing with CO2. Looking at the stats on the right, on average, the 650R Diablo is putting out about 17% more light in the par range at this height, and this remains pretty steady for the remaining heights as well. Here are the 32 inch height measurements, and I think this could be the sweet spot if you're trying to maximize PPFD without giving too much up in terms of coverage evenness. The Diablo absolutely blasts a 5x5 at 32 inches no less. This thing is still putting out over 900 micromoles over a good chunk of the center of this space. The 600R is no slouch though, and overall it averages only about 100 micromoles less than the Diablo, and still puts up some big numbers. We're talking an average of about 800 if you're looking at the center 2x2 two two in its entirety. If we go up to 34 inches, the hot spots in the center die down a little more, the outer edges and corners creep up, and uniformity continues to increase. 34 inches looks to be a solid hang height for both of these lamps as well. The overall average for both of the lights only decreases by about 5 to 7 micromoles from the 32 inch height. I won't spend a whole lot of time here, so just pause if you want to give this a closer look. Finally, at 36 inches, we're down solidly into the 700s in the center for the R spec, and still up in the mid to high 800s for the Diablo. You'll see the corners for the Diablo have hit the 600 mark, which is incredible, and the 600R has pushed up past the 500 mark in the corners as well. So there you go, these are two very capable lights for flowering a 5x5 tent. If you're an efficiency nut and you want to put up numbers in the 1000 plus range, you're going to need the 650R. However, the 600R is a really solid option for everybody else. You can buy the 650R for $1100 or you can save just shy of $400 right now while this 600R is on sale and get a kick-ass light that's averaging only about 100 micromoles less across the whole space at every height. If you're looking for a full cycle light, maybe the 650R's got a touch more blue in it for veg, but this is pretty easy to supplement if you end up going the R-Spec route too. 
That's going to do it for this one, though. If you guys enjoy this content, then please consider subscribing, and I will see you on the next one.